Chapter 15 of the Story of Geronimo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading done by Jules Harlock. The Story of Geronimo by Jim Kajilgard. Chapter 15 the discontented a mile and a half from his farm on turkey creek in arizona's white mountains geronimo skulked in a thicket and looked sourly at a flock of white turkeys there were so many that they seemed a living carpet over a five-acre clearing in which they were catching grasshoppers but they held no charm for geronimo who besides white men would eat a bird that ate snakes? White men also ate the trout that swarmed in white mountain streams, and trout were akin to snakes. Geronimo grimaced. He had had enough, and more than enough, of white men and their ways. A lark called three times. The turkey skulked away. They knew that it was not a lark calling, but a man imitating a lark. A moment later, Naichi slipped into the thicket where Geronimo hid. Naichi said, No one saw me. It is well, said Geronimo. Chato suspects that we are again on the point of fleeing to Mexico. He will be happy to inform the soldiers if he can discover our plans. Naichi said, Chato suspects everything since he turned from his own people to the white men. In his own opinion, Chato is a very great man. He told me himself that Chief Grey Wolf never would have come to the Sierra Madres if he, Chato, had not gone raiding into Arizona. He said the settlers of Arizona had decided that the Apaches would never dare leave Mexico. His raid taught them otherwise, and so Chief Grey Wolf came. For once, Chato spoke the truth, Geronimo said. Without announcing himself, old Nana came so silently that neither Geronimo nor Naichi knew he was coming until he was almost upon them. Mangus and Chihuahua arrived and the leaders who had planned this second outbreak were gathered. Geronimo spoke. When I met Chief Grey Wolf in Mexico, I told him that I would return to Arizona if I might live as an Apache should. But before I could come, I needed time. Not wishing to return to Arizona a poor man, I had to steal enough cattle to make me rich. My warriors and I took 350 cattle from the Mexicans. They were honorably stolen. We brought them to Arizona when we came, but when we arrived at Fort Apache, our cattle were taken from us. The chiefs growled like angry wolves, Geronimo continued. That was not what Chief Grey Wolf promised, but where is he? Where are Captain Crawford and Lieutenant Gatewood? Where are any white men we may trust? They brought us here and over us set strangers like Lieutenant Davis, who knows nothing about Apaches and cares less. I told Mickey Free to tell the white fat chief, Lieutenant Davis, that I had killed men before he was born, old Nana snarled. He cannot tell me what to do. Chihuahua said angrily, He and others do tell us. We must not do this, we must not do that, but we must scratch the ground with those foolish plows they gave us and try to grow corn where it is much easier to steal it. I promise to keep peace with white men. I never promise not to fight with and raid Papagos and Navajos. None of us promised anything except that we would live on the reservation and bother no white men. Geronimo said. It is true that we live in the White Mountains rather than on the flats of the Gila, but how do we live? 
it is still better to be free and at war in mexico than to be at peace and live like the stupid sheep which navajo herders chase right nana agreed it is better to die in battle than to live as a slave before we go i think i will pick a fight with the fat white chief have men not boys beside you if you do geronimo advised lieutenant davis is a warrior how many are we naichi said in all we are thirty-five men eight boys who know how to shoot and a hundred and one women and children we might have had as many more as we cared to take with us if we had been able to, to provide arms for them as it is three of the boys who can shoot must carry bows and arrows since we are unable to get enough rifles it is as well geronimo said the smaller the party the faster we may travel we know that the apache scouts and the white soldiers will stop us if they can and i feel that lieutenant davis is suspicious naichi said i can go to him and pick a fight he would kill me or i would kill him if i kill him he could not stop us since we are not sure he knows anything this is not the time to fight him geronimo said he had not tried to stop us when we are gone he cannot stop us he can send a message by the wire that talks the telegraph said nana he can tell the soldiers at fort thomas to stop us and we shall have to fight them when we meet geronimo said if we start a fight here we must fight all the soldiers and all the apache scouts if we run we cannot be sure that we will meet anyone it is wiser to run the apache started in late afternoon geronimo was the last to leave and he scouted thoroughly seeing nothing he turned his pony southward only another apache could have hidden from geronimo's final scouting as soon as the runaways had gone mickey free rose from the patch of bush in which he had hidden and watched every move he ran full speed to the army headquarters and found lieutenant davis geronimo chihuahua mangas and nana lead many people toward mexico mickey free said Lieutenant Davis hurried to the telegraph operator. Send this message at once to Captain Pierce in Fort Thomas. An unknown number of Apaches under Geronimo and other chiefs are fleeing towards Mexico. Head them off. Right away, the operator said. While the operator worked his key, Lieutenant Davis tapped his foot nervously up and down. He did not as yet know how many Apaches had fled from the reservation, but he did know that, even if they were only a few, they were far more dangerous than the most savage pack of wolves that had ever roamed. If they escaped again into the Sierra Madres, it meant more terror for the citizens of Arizona. From their stronghold in the Mexican mountains, the Apaches would certainly raid Arizona towns and ranches. It meant equal terror for Mexico, and it meant a long and costly military campaign before the runaways were again under control. The telegraph operator continued to work his key, but Geronimo had already stopped long enough in his flight to climb one of the trees to which the telegraph wire was fastened. He had cut the wire with his axe and tied the two ends together with a piece of buckskin. This he did so that the wires would not dangle, making it easy for soldiers to find and repair the break. After five minutes, the operator turned, much puzzled, to Lieutenant Davis. I cannot get through, he said. Stay at your key and keep trying, Lieutenant Davis said. If you get through, say that I'm on the trail with soldiers and scouts. I hope we may catch them, but trailing will be slow at night, and I think it means another campaign in Mexico. Lieutenant Davis was right. 
Geronimo and all his followers again reached Mexico and found a haven in the Sierra Madres. End of chapter 15